All right, guys. This is the Mid State League Weekly. You are listening to right now. The Mid State League Weekly covering Harvest Preparatory School Athletics. We give you the scores, stats, updates to get you caught up on all things Harvest Prep. And then, guys, we'll be giving you some scores and, and uh, taking you around the league. Uh, my name is Willie Stimmich. I'm your host, and uh, I'll be uh, you'll be with me for the next 30 minutes as we get you caught up on all things HPS. Hey, give us a shout and a follow on our social media at MSL Weekly on Twitter, Facebook.com slash MSL Weekly, or hit me up on the IG at Willie Stimmage Photography, or just simply drop me an email at info for Willie at gmail.com. Uh, first segment, uh, we just uh, dive into Harvest Prep Basketball. Uh, as, the, as the guys... Uh, uh, did what they need they normally do that's win and uh second segment we get some uh, updates on some scores some big major upsets in uh in this tournament and uh third segment we'll be finishing strong at the rim so we're gonna close this out real good hey guys uh thank you guys for tuning in once again my name is Willie Stimmich and i'll be with you for the next 30 minutes and before we get started we have a special announcement from the ohio high school Ohio students help create the association's program on sporting behavior. Through the Respect the Game campaign, we are encouraging student athletes, parents, fans, coaches, and officials to do three important things. Speak with courtesy, act with dignity, and play or observe with pride. Okay, guys, we're back. My name is Willie Stimmage. I'm your host, and this is the Mid State League Weekly. So we're gonna go get right into it. Uh, thank you guys for jumping on board. Uh, really appreciate it. Uh, just gonna kind of run down what went on this week in uh, high school basketball here. Uh, Harvest Prep won the district. I mean, these guys are grinders, man. They won the district. Before I get into the district, I'm going to take you back to every game that they played in this first round because they're going to the next round. So uh, we're going to take you back. Uh, our first, their first contest was against International on Monday, February the 26th, and they thumped International 101 36. And uh, this game was like lopsided. I mean, in the first quarter, it was 37 to 9 in the first quarter. And I noticed that everybody on the roster got a chance to play. So that's a good thing. Some of you guys get their feet wet uh, and get in there because uh, we're going to need all hands on deck coming down the stretch here. And you, everybody that's been to the tournament, they know it's going to take a grind, you know, to win the, to win the prize. And um, so with that first game, uh, it was 101-36, Harvest Prep over International. Uh, C.J. Pena had 21. Avante Duncan had four. Christopher Anthony with 15. Peterson, Sean had eight. Bryce Beavers had six. Brandon Beavers had seven. Ralph Robinson, two. Isaiah Cumlin with 15. Uh, Daniel Nairaco had six. Andrew Tate, eight. Uh, Raymond Robinson with five. And Elijah Glenn with four. So that was the uh, first game uh in his in his playoffs uh and the second game uh was played march the third saturday and harvest prep took on madison plains and they kind of uh gave them the business too 70 to 21 can you imagine a team scoring only 21 points in four quarters i mean what what's up with that uh 21 points 21 to 70 uh in that game uh cj Pena had 14 so hines had eight uh, Avante Duncan had five, Christopher Anthony with 14, Bryce, De- Bryce Beavers with three, uh, Brandon had two, their brothers, Isaiah Cumberland with seven, Daniel Narco had uh, three, Elijah Glenn had 14 uh, in that contest. So that was the second game, so Harvest Prep is uh, moving up the ladder here. The third game was a, like a, it's supposed to have been a rematch, uh, it's supposed to have been, a, yeah, it's supposed to have been a rematch, but, uh, this team didn't even didn't even, they didn't even show up. I mean, they took on Pleasant, and that first game was a battle, and Harvest Prep pulled it out. But they took on Pleasant March to Tuesday, March to six, and they beat Pleasant seventy one to forty nine. It wasn't even close. I mean, it wasn't even close. Christopher Anthony had twenty four points, five rebounds, and five assists, and top seeded Harvest Prep uh, trounced uh, Pleasant 
in a D3 ma- matchup at Olin Tangy, C.J. Pena had, uh, he chipped in uh, 16 points, uh, nine rebounds for the Harvest Prep Warriors. And some of the other scores, Sol Hines had six. Uh, like I said, C.J. Pena with uh, 16, Avante Duncan with two, C.J. Anthony with 24, uh, Sean Peterson with six, Brandon Beavers with five, Ralph Robinson with one, Isaiah Cumlin with seven, and Elijah Glenn uh, chipped in four points. And then we come down to uh, the district uh, championship, which is played, uh, I think it was Friday night. Uh, and Harvest Prep uh, outlasted Bishop Reddy, uh, I think it was uh, 64-48. This game was played at Ohio Dominic- Dominican. Uh, Bishop Reddy uh, had all the momentum, and they did, and and. and, and uh, uh, had the crowd on their side in the first first half uh, as they climbed to a 28-27 lead before the break. Uh, but the following 16 minutes when Prep come out of that locker room, don't know what the discussion was, but I guess Coach Dennis really got these guys on track. Uh, Harvest Prep took complete control of Friday's D3 district title game and shutting down uh, Bishop Reddy. Uh, with a victory at Ohio Dominican, uh, using a 17 to four third quarter, uh, Harvest Prep got back to his defensive identity at halftime, using his length and physicality to stifle uh, Bishop Reddy, eliminating any type of quality look near the rim. Prep uh, flexed his muscles and remained unbeaten in front of a packed house. It was sold out. Uh, Bishop Reddy got close as seven within 3:46 to go in the third. However. Uh, the Warriors closed on a 7-0 run uh, the rest of the period to take commanding 45-31 advantage going into the final frame. Uh, sophomore guard C.J. Anthony set the tone in the second half, hitting uh, three pointers and three triples after uh, the break to lead all scores with 23 points. Uh, C.J. ability to get to the rim and finish uh, through contact put the pressure on Bishop Reddy's guards uh, as it became all too much down the stretch. I mean, this guy, I mean, you CJ, I know one thing about CJ. You give him the ball uh, late in the game, let him go one-on-one, he could take anybody off the dribble. And if you get too far off from him, he has the three-point uh, range. He can bust you with the three-pointer, and you get too close, or he can take you to the rack. I mean, he just, uh, he has a total package. And uh, he, he could use that, uh, that package in the next two, three games. I mean, that, that, that is the X factor. I mean, in, in, uh, I was watching it. In, in, if they would just let him go, I mean, I'm not the coach, but, you know, my, when I look at it on the floor, because I'm always on the floor and I see the action, and this guy, one-on-one, he'd take anybody off the dribble. I mean, and then if you get, like I said, you get too close up on him, he's going to bust you with that three-pointer. So uh, kudos to CJ. Uh, high-flying uh, senior uh, CJ Pena uh, got hot after halftime. He finished with 16 points. And topped off the win with a uh, power dunk uh, in the final minutes. Uh, C.J. Pena added seven rebounds to help Harvest Prep uh, disrupt the front line of uh, Bishop Reddy. Uh, and when he did, he when he put that dunk down, it really put them to bed. Uh, it was time for Bishop Reddy to go to sleep. Uh, and when and, and when, C. when Anthony uh, misses some time with foul trouble, Brandon Beavers uh, came alive. As he, uh, you know, had a couple of little uh, hard layups and a couple of steals in transition to put the Warriors up 38-29. But Beavers finished with eight points, while junior center Elijah Glenn had a solid all-around performance, adding seven points and eight rebounds. And junior Sol Hines was solid in the spurts, adding five points and five rebounds. I mean, when I, when I look at uh, Elijah... Man, you get this guy the ball in the post. He has the size. He has a little, the little height. He has the height. He has the size. And I think it can really. Uh, he 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 he's he's all beef inside that inside the paint. I mean, can nobody even stop him? To me, if they give him the ball like one on one, I mean, he, I mean, you got outside threat. You got inside threat. I mean, even CJ Pena uh, with his size, he he can knock down the threes, but he also got length to drive to the hoop. But uh, Elijah, man, I mean, Elijah just, just tough in the paint, man. He was just punishing them dudes uh, inside the paint. And, uh, you know, uh, Harvard's Prep, they move on to Athens now to where they will be heavily favored to advance to the state tournament. Uh, for Bishop Reddy, uh, the Silver Knights, uh, 
All I can say is uh, their season is over with. I mean, uh, that was that was it for them. And uh, Horace Prep moves on, and Bishop Reddy uh, moves out. So, just to give you the final stats here, uh, So has had five. Uh, CJP had sixteen. Avante Duncan had uh, three. He had he his three point that three pointer that he shot was critical. I mean, if he didn't make no other shots, that one shot was critical. It, it was late in the game, and they really needed a score. And he spark plugged that that three pointer. Uh, he really needed that one. Uh, CJ Anthony with twenty three. Brandon Beavers of uh, eight. Isaiah Cumberland with two. And Isaiah Cumberland, if if he if we get him involved early uh whenever he gets in there he could be an x factor he's he's my x factor because this this guy uh this guy can play he he can really play but he you know uh he only had two points but i think if he gets going and yeah, it's lights out uh elijah glenn was seven points for harvest prep uh the first quarter was like uh prep 18 ready 12 so ready kept it they kept it uh competitive and then at halftime it was 28 27 so they made some noise to go into halftime. Uh, and so they had the crowd behind them and everything. But, you know, one thing about Harvest Prep, they don't bend, they don't break. You know, you, you think you can break them, but you can't break them. Cause they come out that third quarter and lock them up. I mean, it was actually, they outscored them 17 to 4 in that third quarter. And that, that's kind of like was the was the, the, the killer. Uh, they kind of put them to bed like early. That, that dunk really put them to sleep. And they knew it was over. They knew it was over. Uh, some things you got to look at, uh, uh, depending, you, you, you can't, you know, a lot of times we, we depend on the, the guard play. I know CJ Anthony, but you know, everybody has to get involved, man. Everybody to play their part. Uh, you know, sometimes CJ won down to one game. He picked up some early fouls, had to go to the bench. Uh, they was so high as me and Sean Peterson came in and, and gave him some nice points. And then uh, So Hines came in one and gave us some points. One day he got in foul trouble. So everybody had to play their role. I mean, it, uh, and I didn't, then again, I look at the inside game. I mean, uh, like I say, Logic Glenn, uh, you can post this guy up and uh, with anybody. I think he he he'll be a, a major factor. He's like he might be a nightmare for some people if you really know his game. Uh, and like I say, Isaiah Cumlin is my X factor. Uh, just once this guy get off. I thought th- he was he's going he's going to be p- perform pretty good, have a good game, and uh, like I said, uh, I like Elijah Glenn's post play once he get in the paint, and uh, so Harper's Prep moves on uh, to the uh, regional semifinals, uh, that game will be played Saturday, but I get into some of that later on, and uh, I was shocked some of these upsets I seen uh, Johnstown defeated Wellington. 59-57. I'm surprised that Wellington, Wellington got bounced early. Uh, you know, so uh, that was a really shocker to me. And, uh, you know, well, it is what it is. It's March Madness. So, uh, you know, you got to win. You got to win or you go home. Hey, guys, we're going to take a quick break. And uh, when we come back, we're going to get into uh, Harvest Prep's opponent. Uh, some information I have on them. And I don't have much, but... You got to scout out your opponent, and uh, that opponent happens to be Willisburg, who defeated Piketon uh, Friday, Saturday. I think it was Saturday night. Saturday, uh, they defeated Piketon, so they move on to the next round. But, uh, you know, we got to, you know, celebrate the district, put the district in the file cabinet, and let's just think about the regionals now. You know, we can't celebrate no more. We got to be focused and locked in, and I know these guys are focused and locked in. Uh I know they are. I mean, this is Harvest Prep, and I've been around this team, this uh, this program for a while. I know Coach Jennings got these guys focused and locked in. Hey, guys, we'll take a quick break. When we come back, uh, we will take you around the league. Not, a, not around the league, I'm sorry. We're going to take you. We're going to uh, tell you about our opponent. Let's put it like that. So this is Miss Day League Weekly. My name is uh, Willie Stimmich. Every parent wants their child to study hard and succeed. At HPS, we believe athletics play a vital role in your child's development. Sports at Harvest Preparatory School train students in key qualities such as leadership, commitment, and Christian character. Athletes at HPS consistently have the opportunity to compete at the championship level because our driving force is playing to win. 
Here at Harvest Preparatory School, we conduct our athletics at the highest level. Not only do our students at Harvest Preparatory excel academically, but they have the opportunity to excel athletically as well. Currently, four out of five students at Harvest Prep in grades 7 through 12 participate in interscholastic athletics. Here at HPS, we are proud members of the Mid-State League and the Ohio High School Athletic Association. If your son or daughter are interested in participating in athletics here at Harvest Preparatory, they will be coached by a world-class coaching staff. Harvest Prep has incredible athletic facilities and great sports teams. Our facilities, really second to none. Whether it's volleyball or it's baseball, whether it's basketball or football, your child will be afforded the highest quality athletic program available. No matter what it is, our kids get to compete with the best in Central Ohio, and the coaches are fantastic in it, instilling Christian character while in competition. We're sure you'll agree Harvest Preparatory School is the right option for your child. A Christ-centered okay. curriculum, a safe, nurturing environment, an academic program that is first class, and opportunities for your student to participate in athletics. Okay, guys, uh, we're back. Uh, some Miss State League Weekly. My name is Willie Stimmich, and uh, getting into a little March Madness with our uh, future. But this is March, and this is March Madness. Y'all just looking at the uh, NCAA brackets and trying to find out where Ohio State is seated. So, you know, all this madness start Tuesday, and it's going to go on for the next two or three weeks. But not just that madness. This madness right here at, uh, uh, in high school basketball. I mean, this this is uh, the girls are going to the state this week, and uh, the boys will be going to the state next week. So, uh, but the boys are in the regionals, and uh, that's what it is. So, guys, let's just get right into it. Uh, so, we've been taking on Wheelersburg. Uh, they defeated Piketon uh, sixty-six to fifty, and for twenty-nine minutes. Piketon hung right in there with Wheelersburg Saturday evening, but uh, it was the last three minutes of the period in the fourth quarter that eventually led to uh, Piketon's demise in the, in the Division Three District Championship at Ohio University. Uh, uh, Wheelersburg defeated, uh, ended Piketon's season 66-50, a final score that does not begin to indicate how close the ball game really was. Uh, Coach Evans, Evan Leg, I guess is what it is. This is coming from Chiller Coffee Gazette. Uh, Coach Evan Leg uh, said we had some mental lapses on defense and we looked tired. Uh, we made a big run at the end of the first half and it almost looked like if we were going on the ropes, if you had looked around to see how gassed we were. Sometimes the ball just didn't bounce our way. As aside from committing 17 turnovers, Piketon's biggest problem came in the form of Willisburg forward Tanner Holden. Now, you got to take a good look at this guy. This guy plays football and he plays basketball. Using his six foot six frame to his advantage, Holden scored game high 20, 24 points and collected nine rebounds. Holden is a nightmare matchup because if you're trying to go small on him, he'll post you up. And if you, you're trying to go big on him, he'll go around you. And that's what the coach of Piketon said. Uh, I thought we did a decent job on him, but we kind of let him, uh, let him loose, you know, and so, and we were gas for air, uh, trying to uh, guard this guy. And, uh, I watched some little YouTube videos on this guy. Uh, he is as advertised, but I think uh, our defense is going to be – I mean, I think we're going to be locked up. We're going to be locked on him. We're going to be locked on the game. I think we, we, we're going to be focused. So, you know, and with that final score, was 66 to 50 as Willisburg defeated Piketon. Uh, like I said, Tanner Holden had 24, Lowry 13, Truett 10. I think Lowry is a freshman, I believe, yeah. Cole Lowry is a senior. I'm sorry, and JJ Truitt is a freshman, and Tanner Holden is only a junior, six foot six, one eighty. Uh, they have Matthew Miller, and they have Colin uh, Connor Mullins. He's a junior, and uh, like I said, Holden also plays football. Uh, the game against uh, uh, Greens Up County, Green Up County. Uh, Tanner Holden scored twenty four points, and he also had twenty five rebounds. 
And then the game against Portsmouth, he scored 14 points, 8 rebounds. And in this this this, this, uh, this game we just talk, got to talking about, he scored uh, against Piketon, he scored 24 points, and he collected 9 rebounds. So uh, I guess he's the guy you got to look out for. I mean, you know, do your homework. Uh, but I know that Prep's going to be focused. I know they're going to be focused. And uh, like I said, this is J.J. Truitt. He's – a good three-point shooter. He's on the E6-3. He's just a freshman. And uh, Matt Miller's a freshman. Uh, uh, but the key, to, the key that holds this Willowbird team together is Tanner Holden. 6'6", uh, six, six, junior, 180 pound. And Cole Lowry, senior, 6'1". And J.J. Truitt, freshman, 6'3". And uh, but uh, hey, we got some size. We got we got a second unit and a third unit. So I think we'll be able to compete so with that being said guys we're going to take another quick break and we come back we're going to uh finish strong at the rim and wrap it up so with that being said this is the mid-state league weekly uh my name is willie stimmage student athletes are unique and so are their sports injuries they need a level of expertise found only at nationwide children's hospital our sports medicine experts offer something adult care providers can't a complete understanding of the student athlete at eight convenient locations across central Ohio. To get your student athletes back in the game and keep them there, start by visiting nationwidechildrens.org slash sportsmedicine for more information. That's nationwidechildrens.org slash sportsmedicine. Chocolate milk is the official beverage of the Ohio High School Athletic Association. Not only is it delicious, low-fat or fat-free chocolate milk is a great way to fuel up for any activity. Enjoying nutrient-rich foods like chocolate milk and staying active helps you perform your best on the field, on the court, on the track, or anywhere. Because it's packed with good stuff, few beverages are better to fuel up with than low-fat or fat-free chocolate milk. It tastes great and is packed with the same nine essential nutrients as white milk. Visit drink-milk.com for the facts on chocolate milk
Okay, guys, uh, we're back. I'm sorry about the technical difficulty. Uh, let me just go and wrap this up right quick. Like I said, I gave a shout out to uh, all of the. Uh, uh, let's see here. Let me just run through this again. Harvest Prep was uh, the final uh, coaches poll. Harvest Prep was one. Alpha Centry was two. Wellington was three. Northmore was four. Bishop Reddy was fifth, and Grandview was uh, six. And your final stats and scoring. Uh, C.J. Anthony, C.J. Pena, 20.2 points a game, 19.5 points a game, respectfully. Uh, assists, uh, Brandon Beavers, uh, 5.5 assists a game. C.J. Anthony, 4.1 points a game. Uh, your field goal percentage, uh, C.J. Anthony, 63.9%, and uh, C.J. Pena, 63.7%. In your three-point category, uh, Sol Hines, 43.3%, C.J. Anthony, 42.3%, and uh, C.J. Pena, 42.1%. And uh, C.J. Anthony jacked up 130 attempts on the three-point strike with uh, So Hines shooting 97 three-pointers and C.J. Pena with 95 three-pointers. Congratulations to So Hines and Brandon Beavers for being named uh, player, uh, being named uh, MSL Cardinal Division second team. JB Boys, uh, shout out to you for being winners. Sean Peterson, uh, MSL Cardinal Division honorable mention. Uh, CJ Pena, first team all MSL Division Cardinal. And CJ Anthony, uh, MSL Division Player of the Year. And last year, he was MSL Division Freshman of the Year. So, shout out, kudos to you guys. And Coach Dennis, uh, Coach of the Year. Shout out to you, Coach Dennis, and all you guys. Uh, let me see here. Now, let's get into the uh, playoffs. Here's this where the playoffs stacks up. Uh, we're not going to go through all this. Division Division 1. Uh, uh, let me see here. Division 2. It's going to be played on Tuesday. Here we go. Division 3. Look at the Athens uh, Region 11. Uh, Sugar Creek Gar- Gary will be taking on uh, Oak Hill. Uh, that game is Wednesday at 615. And I think we faced uh, Garraway once before. And then uh, in the nightcap, Harvest Prep will be taking on Willisburg at 8 p.m. on Wednesday. And uh, I'm not going to be able to get down there because of the work schedule, but I will be following. And I know my boys are uh, going to do good, and all my and my homies are going to keep me updated. So that's how we work this thing. So uh hope you guys can get out there. It's at Ohio university in athens and uh hope you guys can get there so with that being said guys uh that's a wrap for today and uh sorry about the technical difficulty we we try to clean that up on the next one uh so uh kudos and thank you guys for listening let me give you uh uh a quick thank you to the oshaa and the ohio prep sports writers association for allowing me to be a part of a good organization that you know like that we like to talk sports so that's what i do uh thank harvest prep athletics for allowing me to uh get you guys out there on the map uh talk about you brag on you thank you for uh, athletic director coach dave wolf and then uh, i mean athletic director dave wolf and coach dave dennis uh thank you guys for uh uh for what you do i thank you the listening audience for allowing me to get in your in your grill and start talking sports on Harvest Prep. And if you miss any one of these shows, you can recap it on YouTube, SoundCloud, Twitter, downloadable. So with that being said, guys, uh, uh, thank you guys for listening. It's uh, been a great week, and we'll see you on the next uh, podcast. So with that being said, uh, have a great week, guys. Baby girl, what's happening? Junior ass and body. So don't